Hello everyone, this is Wei Li from the University of Science and Technology of China. First, thanks a lot to the organizer who made this online field trip possible and for giving me the chance to present this talk, which I hope you enjoy. I want to talk about our recent works on high-speed MDI QVD with silicon photonics first and then about some side channels from an experimentalist view. Before jumping into the details, let me give you an idea of our motivation. QQD links can only operate over point-to-point -point connection between two users, thus cannot be deployed over any arbitrary network topology and is distance limited. So far, the existing QQD networks in America, Europe, China, and Japan implement trusted relays to extend the reach of QQD links in a hop-by-hop -hop fashion. More recently, Network-centric or quantum access network is proposed in a way that a quantum receiver works as a server for many users, which is suitable for a metropolitan network. Nonetheless, it's also based on trusted relay. In the future, the implementation of untrusted relays can be a huge up security upgrade to the network. In the development of QKD networks, QKD systems have gone from tabletop experiments to compact and autonomous system as now a growing commercial market. Thanks to the emerging nanophotonics technology, QKD systems are enabled to be integrated onto a chip. There are some pioneering works demonstrating various QKD protocols recently. Among them, silicon and uh, indium phosphide are two promising pr platforms. The silicon has a mature industry production chain, and some company like iMac provides per commercial solutions to the users like us. Due to its advantages of compact size and low cost, it's reasonable to envisage that the system integration is inevitable for future developments. By replacing the quantum receiver with a Bell state measurement device, and each user holds a transmitter chip. A network-centric structure with untrusted relay is enabled by the combination of silicon photonic chips and MDI QKD. Moreover, the relay holds the expensive and bulky measurement device which is shared by all users. And this structure can bypass the challenging technique of integrating single photon detectors onto the chip as the user do not need to perform the quantum measurement. Overall, the Chip-based MDI QKD network enables a promising solution for low-cost, low scalable QKD networks with an untrusted relay, which has not been demonstrated yet. As a first step, we ex experimentally demonstrate a 1.25 GHz position encoding MDI QKD system with silicon photonic modulation chip. As shown on the right, the chip integrates the QKD encoding components of an intensity modulator a polarization modulator and three variable optical attenuators. The chips are fabricated by iMac and packaged with a thermoelectric cooler. It has a small footprint of 4.8 by 3 mm. The intensity modulator utilized an Mach Zander interferometer structure and the phase between the two arms is modulated by a carrier depletion modulator. Another component, the polarization modulator, is realized by intensity modulator followed by a polarization rotator combiner. Paired with a de dedicated driving circuit, we have successfully produced randomly modulated polarization states with 23 dB extinction ratio at gigahertz operation. To operate the MDI QGD system faithfully at gigahertz, we face two experimental challenges. First, the carrier depletion modulator on silicon substrate has a large half-wave voltage, which is 5 to 6 volts. We designed a few programmable gate array board to output four independently adjustable levels at 10 gigahertz sampling rates and then amplified to 7.5 volts. Such performance has not been readily available to a commercial product. Second, the good interference between two independent lasers are crucial for MDI-QVD. 
gigahertz operation is not an easy task. We leveraged in the injection locking technique and an extra optical filter to minimize the time jitter and the frequency chirp. At last, we achieved a homomandal interference in visibility of 48%, a great improvement from 28% without the aforementioned techniques. Besides the experimental challenges, MDIQD requires two independent sources to maintain a good interference throughout the experiments. For this purpose, we characterize the stability of the polarization, the wavelengths, and the cuber of our system to determine the period of manual calibration and maintenance. Note that we perform uh, the experiments in the laboratory. The polarization extinction ratio is maintained above 27 dB and over a 70 km fiber spool. The wavelength is stabilized by accurate temperature tuning as shown in figure B. The wavelength of the two sources is detuned uh, purposely to show, on, show them on the same figure with the stability shown above. Uh, we recalibrate the polarization and timing mode of the system every two hours. The quantum bit error rate is shown on the bottom, which can also prove the overall stability of the system. Next, I want to show you the lab view of our system. Due to the compact size of the transmitter chip, it is ready to pack into a shoebox size chassis with the laser diode and the driving circuit. The driving circuits are stacked up to drive multiple chips. Each of them can support four different channels. The superconducting nanowire detectors are enclosed in a cryogenic chamber, which is cooled to 2.2 Kelvin. The detecting system is much bulkier than the transmitter, but it can be shared among users in the MDI-type untrusted relay structure. Using the described setup, we perform a series MDIQD experiments using the four intensity pro, uh, decoy pro state protocol proposed by Xiangbing Wang. In the final case scenario, we perform a full optimization of the implementation parameters by exploiting the joint constraints for statistical fluctuation. We obtain 268 bits per second secret key rate over a 28 dB loss channel. And according to the simulation results, we achieved the highest key rates among the reported MDIQD experiments. The paper is recently accepted by PRX. Okay, the above result hasn't considered all the security loopholes arising in our high-speed chip-based MDIQD. So next, I want to talk about some of them and discuss their impacts on the security of the system. They are the side channels occurred in the high-speed implementation and the side channels in the chip-based system. The first issue related to high-speed system is the pattern effect, hence the correlation between pulses. The effect can appear both in the intensity modulator and the polarization modulator. Here, we test the intensity correlation between the adjacent pulses and calculate the deviation for each intensity. We can see that the largest deviation is around 12% and is from the weakest decoy intensity except from for the vacuum state. I will analyze the reason for this at the next slide. In a paper by Yoshino, they proposed an efficient countermeasure against correlated intensity fluctuations by using pattern shifting and alternate key distillation and thus mitigate the threat. The severity of the pattern effect is decided by the frequency response of the modulator and the driving circuit. As you can see, our uh, carrier depletion uh, modulator has a 3 dB uh, bandwidth of 18 gigahertz and the frequency response is rather flat below 10 gigahertz. So the deviation in our case is majorly contributed by the driving signal. We observe a larger voltage deviation for the weakest decoy level. We note that benefiting from the DC coupled output, our circuit is 
free from the baseline drift exists existing in the AC coupled circuit, which is used in most high speed application. In classical communication, the baseline drift is alleviated by special encoding, while this is not allowed in QTD. So we can say that DC coupled is better than AC coupled in QKD application. Besides high speed, chip-based QKD itself can open some loopholes due to the integration and fabrication technology. Here I want to show you the preliminary results of our chip-based system against the Trojan horse attack. Because of the small footprint, we use the optical frequency reflectometry to measure the reflectivity from the output port of the chip. The result is shown in the left corner. The reflecting peak mainly comes from the multi-mode interferometer, the photodiode, and the grating coupler on the chip. We purposely modulate different components of the chip, uh, and with the additional information about the length of the waveguide, the reflecting phases can therefore be dis distinguished. The portion within the red frames is the charging photons that can leak the information of the polarization modulator, and the portion in the blue frames indicates uh, the information leakage of the intensity modulator. The reflectivity is minus 64 dB and minus 86 dB respectively. And a typical time beam phase uh, encoding transmitter with bulk device, the reflectivity is minus 42.87 dB. So the reflectivity of our system is smaller, which is beneficial to, pre to prevent Trojan horse attack. As you may notice in our chip design, the variable uh, optical attenuator is placed before the polarization modulator, which can make the system more vulnerable to Jordan Horse attack. This is because the attenuator has a relatively large polarization dependent loss. In the future, the attenuator should be placed at the output port of the chip. Followed by the analysis technique introduced by Tamaki, we extend the case to our MDI system in the finite key scenario and consider its contributions by the polarization modulator and the intensity modulator. Using the parameter of our system, we simulate the key rates for both MDI and BB84 QTD under different isolations. We find that the MDI system is more vulnerable to Trojan horse attack. Moreover, we find our setup with 230 dB isolation is sufficient to maintain security under Trojan horse attack. Apart from the aforementioned loopholes, there are also other potential side channels in our high-speed chip-based QVD system. The first one is the polarization-dependent loss which can cause the correlation between the polarization and intensity. Although we carefully design the chip, the polarization dependent loss is still as large as 0.8 dB, and we measure the intensity fluctuation to be less than 0.04 dB, which can show the stable operation of our system. Thirdly, the random phase uh, assumption can be violated in uh, high-speed implementation. We haven't measured the phase correlation of our laser source due to the lack of stable asymmetric Noxander interferometer. But according to a paper by Kobayashi, a secure implementation of decoy BB84 protocol is achievable even for the 10 GHz clock frequency by using the laser diode under proper operating conditions. Thanks to the important works by Tamaki, Pereira, and others, some of the side channels have already been considered in the security proof. To summarize this talk, we experimentally demonstrate a 1.25 GHz chip-based MDI QGD, which is, is amongst the highest reported so far. We also noticed several loopholes in our high-speed chip transmitter and discussed the origin of the loopholes and its impact on our system. Some of them has negligible effects on the secret key rate Others can be considered into the security proof, but need future work to improve the performance. In the end, 
I'd like to take the opportunity to thank my supervisor, Fei Gu Xi, and Jianwei Pan, and my colleagues. And most importantly, thank you for your attention.